The Aldabra is a toy that you see too often for sale. I'm gonna just grab this tick right here. You guys see that tick right there? You have to be quick. I did think it was interesting just how small Timmy is as opposed to Nostradamus. Pretty nuts. Boy, wow, he's sliding down here. This guy is not slow. You're gonna watch Timmy, Boba, and Cersei grow up right here on this channel. Come here, Timmy, where are you going? Oh, we got some cactus pad, we got a little guy, and today we're gonna show you how you can go from a juvenile tortoise, this is an Aldabra, of course, to something a little bit more like Nostradamus and Socrates. I wanted to introduce Timmy to Nostradamus so these guys can see just what's gonna happen in, uh, oh gosh, Nostradamus is about 18 years old. We sincerely thank all of you happy campers out there. Your support makes a real difference in our efforts here at Camp Kennet. This week's shout out goes to Kylie and Mark Hampson. Thank you for all you do and for loving reptiles. So in about 18 years, you'll have a tortoise almost as big. Look at this, say hello. Oh my gosh, this is amazing, man. This is the first time these guys are meeting each other. And of course we have Cersei and Boba as well that are a little bit bigger. But my goal is eventually to have all the giant tortoises living together. Um, of course, these are the two Aldabras. So when we get the other three in here with Nostradamus, we'll have four Aldabras and two Galapagos tortoises. And right now, uh, you can just see Timmy does not know what to think of this big old tortoise right here. Now, Timmy is named Timmy, but I'm not sure if Timmy is a boy or not. Timmy's got a little tiny tick on him right here. We're gonna pluck that off if I can get it. Oh, we're gonna have to let his leg move again. I think this again. guy wants to pluck it off. Oh, yeah, they, these guys won't pluck ticks off themselves. What they do in the wild is, like with Nostradamus, I can touch his neck and kind of hang out. He goes into an almost like a semi-like trance, trance rather, and he allows me to scratch and pick things off. Now. I'm going to just grab this tick right here. Oh God, I've almost got it. You have to be quick when you're dealing with these little guys. See that tick right there? Oh yeah, yeah. Usually I have forceps that I can get it with, but I'm trying to let him move. Uh, once he moves that leg, oh God, as soon as he feels me, he pulls his leg up because he's nervous. But I'll get it. I always get the tick. If you got a tick, I'll get it. Got it. All right, so we'll squish this tick. But in the meantime, let's just see what the interaction is. Now, usually there's no real drama with the Aldabra tortoises, but of course, I'm not gonna leave this tortoise in here because the enclosure is too large, and I wouldn't want this tortoise to get hurt or stepped on by some of these bigger, more heavy adults. But I did think it was interesting to kind of show you guys just how small Timmy is as opposed to Nostradamus. It is just incredible. I got Nostradamus back in August of 2004, and uh, he was smaller than Timmy, which is incredible to think that Nostradamus was once that big and even smaller. So pretty nuts. I can barely get him in the same frame. It's amazing, right? Look at the climbing though. Look at how Timmy can climb really well. I love having these kind of enclosures because these guys will then, uh, you know, they can use all their muscles and that helps them grow properly as well. But I'm keeping a good eye on Timmy, don't worry. And we also got some food. Let's see if Timmy will nibble on that. Probably too much, too much happening for Timmy right now, but I wouldn't mind seeing if he'll nibble. Yeah. Let's see. I like to get him one that's broken off so he can smell it. Come here, do you want to have a little bit treat? You like cactus? If we could get this guy to eat after all this all this adventure, that would be good. But I don't think it's gonna happen. I think he's a little too a little too shy still. Wondering where these monsters came from. Yeah, exactly. But it's pretty cool, man. So this isn't exactly, the Aldabra isn't a tortoise that you see too often, uh, you know, for sale. There are some breeders here in the United States. Um, they do offer them, they're a CITES 2 animal. They can go across state lines, but they are definitely closely watched. All giant tortoises and especially animals that come from islands are gonna be a little bit more fragile um, because their existence takes place in a very limited range. These guys live, of course, 
in the Indian Ocean on the Aldabra Atoll. That is where they are actually native to. And an atoll is nothing more than, an, uh, than a coral uh, outcropping, if you will, or a coral head sticking up out of the ocean. It's not a lot of elevation. There's hardly any water on these atolls. So these guys have actually developed the ability to siphon water right through their nares, their nostrils, and then bring it into their mouth. Uh, because if you notice how their nares are, they're, they're pointy. Their nose is a little bit pointy at the front. And that's so they can get into those kind of that limestone, that coral limestone that, that the islands are made out of and get any fresh water from any rain that may have taken place. Um, the reason these animals are, were so sought after uh, on for ship's captains and sailors was because they didn't need to drink for a long time and they don't need to eat for a long time because they were able to grow to such a large size on just really low nutrient rich foods, different weeds, different cactus, different plants is what they ate. They will make use of some protein. I've seen them and read accounts of them eating crabs uh, just for some extra protein and calcium from the exoskeletons of the crabs. But by and large, these are herbivores and they really do great. And it's kind of funny because reptiles, when found on islands, get bigger than reptiles that are on the continents. And then mammals that are found on islands have something called dwarfism. It's really interesting. And why is that, do you think? Why would mammals get smaller on an island, but reptiles tend to grow bigger? Like the Komodo dragon, world's largest lizard, lives on an island. World's largest tortoises are found on islands, the Galapagos and the Aldabra Atoll. And I think it's because of their physiology. Reptiles are cold-blooded. That means that their body temperature is similar to that of their surroundings. They have to do behavioral things like move in and out of heat sources to raise or lower their body temperature. Because they have a slower metabolism and because they can exploit, whoa, he's sliding down here, take it easy. Uh, because they can exploit uh, that slow metabolism, they don't have the same energy needs as a mammal because they're endothermic or warm-blooded. That means that they can make more use of less dense foods, less nutrient-dense foods, and they can grow larger. And they don't eat up all their resources. Whereas a large mammal, like a large rhino or a large elephant, would totally go right through all of the food that's on that island pretty quickly. So that's why they dwarf. Very, very interesting stuff. And this guy is not slow. This guy moves pretty quick, these uh, little tortoises. They're pretty cool. They want to hide. Most of the time, tortoises of this size are going to be living, believe it or not, when they go, uh, when they're on the Aldabra Island, the smaller tortoises stay away from the larger ones, of course, because they'll get injured, they'll get crushed. So they actually live in these little valleys, these little crevices that exist on the island. They'll live in those crevices and they'll eat the plants that pop up out of there. And their job is to stay in there as long as they can. It protects them from birds. It protects them from getting crushed. And then once they get big enough, they head on out into the wider world and join the adults in the search for food on their islands. Um, you'll also find these tortoises on the Seychelles where they've been brought into by different shipping uh, interests, you know, many, many years ago. Um, and there's also a story of Adiwata, which was a tortoise that was brought from Captain Cook when he went to the Aldabra Atoll. It was given to a Maharaji in India. And as the story goes, that tortoise lived 230 years. It was the oldest living tortoise on earth or the oldest living vertebrate, which is pretty amazing. 230 years was brought as an adult and gifted to a Maharaji in India. That's insane. So 230 years, that animal could be closer to 300 years old because it was already an adult. And we already know at 18 years, Nostradamus is just about 150 pounds. And uh, my goodness, he's got way more to go because the adults of the Aldabra tortoise can reach 600 pounds. Same with the Galops. Which is bigger, the Galop or the Aldabra? Well, that's an interesting question. In most cases, the Aldabra males get larger than Galapagos tortoises, but there's certain islands that have different species 
of Galapagos tortoise. And that tortoise, certain islands have larger Galapagos males than the Aldabra. So it's really how you're looking to measure this. I'd say overall, the Aldabra tortoise is going to be a larger species. And uh, there's Darwin, Darwin herself, she is a, a Galapagos female, and she's topped out at about 350 pounds. This girl is heavy. I love giant tortoises. If you're a kid growing up and you go to the zoos, it was always exciting for me to see a tortoise that I could look eye to eye with. Now, of course, I'm a little bit bigger, but when we go visit my friend Sam Pascucci at Florida Iguana and Tortoise Breeders, he's got some giant male Aldabra and Galops that when they stand up real tall to get a mango, their necks come close to my eyesight, my eye line, which is incredible. Massive, massive animals that he's raised from hatchlings to adults. So really, really cool to see that. Um, and it's awesome that we have a small tortoise like Timmy that we're going to be able to keep an eye on. You're going to watch Timmy, Boba, and Cersei grow up right here on this channel. I hope you guys will be long-term viewers because it's going to be a long time before they come into the main uh, colony here that we're building. Oh, big Darwin, no problem. Look at Timmy, guys. He's just chilling out looking at these giant tortoises like, how did this happen to me? Just put me back, will you? All right, Tim, we'll put you back. I just wanted to spit some facts for my friends out there about these giant species of tortoise, the Aldabra and the Galapagos. They're two of my favorite. They were one of those species, as I was mentioning before, that's like a bucket list for me. And when I moved to Florida, I knew I had to have some. And I was able to locate great people like Sam Pascucci and some others where I was able to get uh, them as young, young hatchlings. Uh, of course, Boba and Timmy came from our friend out there in Texas. Uh, and, and Isaac, uh, he gifted them to us here at the camp because he just wanted to see them go to a good home. For whatever reason, he just wasn't able to continue to care as they were getting larger and larger. And, you know, that is something that happens, you know, when we talk about sulcata tortoises, we talk about any of these large species of tortoise. I think it's very important to remember that an animal starts out small and then gets bigger and bigger. And as it gets bigger and bigger, its care gets more and more difficult. The food amounts. Uh, a little bit more than some people are used to. Their housing requirements. Look at the size of their enclosure. And in the summer, we open up a whole nother section that these animals are able to get to. And of course, their heated shelter for the times when it gets too cold for them to be out. Very important to plan ahead. Now, think about this. Not only do you have to plan ahead for size, you gotta plan ahead because these tortoises are gonna outlive you. This tortoise right here, Timmy, he could easily get 230 years old himself. I ain't gonna make it. I'm lucky if I got another 40, 50 years left. Holy smokes. So good thing I've got little Sophia who loves these animals. She's gonna be taking care of everyone. And uh, my tortoises will go to her and they'll also go back to some of the societies that I belong to. So there you have it. A little catch up session with our giant tortoises and our not yet giant tortoise right here is trying to, trying to get away from us. What do you say we say goodbye to these guys and we'll head on over and put Timmy back in his enclosure and we'll wish him the best and a nice healthy life here at Camp Kennan where this little dude is gonna get bigger and bigger and you guys are gonna be witness to it all. So thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Hey, let's go put him down next to someone his own size. How about Cersei? Here she is right now. Cersei is a beauty. Get back over there. All right. Awesome day today here at the camp. Thanks for joining me as always, friends. I love having you around. I enjoy spending my time with you and my animals and hope you learned something today. So go on over and, uh, you know, maybe hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you again real soon. Uh, bye.